This isn't the same as learning what the coach wants you to do in a session. What is socially acceptable in a changing room is very different to what's socially acceptable in the workplace. There are obviously things you miss, like the, the team, the camaraderie stuff, but it shouldn't be a daunting thing. It should be a fun, exciting thing to look forward to. And that's why I had, I, I had to pull myself early. That drop from being this level to this level is really hard. That was one of the hardest things for me. So we all made it to the elite game, um, but I guess what point along that career did you start thinking about what comes after rugby? I think our answers are going to be really different because yeah. for me, 12 of my 15 years as an elite player, I wasn't paid, so I had to work. But then I decided when I was thinking about what career did I want to do, it was what am I passionate about? Um, and but also what's going to give me the flexibility to be able to train full time and do what I want to do. So it just gave me an insight into things I could do rather than exactly what I wanted to do when I completely stopped, if that makes sense. It was more what works with rugby. I think I was at probably Exeter at the time and wasn't playing a great deal. And I just wasn't really sure if I was loving it, to be honest. And I think I also probably just saw people that I'd played with before or at that club retire through injury and then they were like looking to go and find work. And I kind of thought nothing would scare me more than trying to figure out how I was going to like look after my kids uh, without having a clue. So I put quite a bit of work in and on my days off would go and do internships and just go and get lots of different experiences, not necessarily to find out what I did want to do, but actually it helped rule out of things, a lot of things that I didn't <laughs> want to do. I knew I didn't really want to be in an office. I wanted to do something creative. I wanted to make something and I liked connecting with people. Then I learned to brew beer, then I had my own personal experience and that's what came together and ticked a lot of boxes on the creative side and the people side all around it. Well, you... you were tired early, didn't you? Yeah, you would have been early in us. 32? Early, early enough maybe in my position. But I, I think like we, we're extremely fortunate with, with the way Sarri's, uh, Saracens was run in terms of like dedicated people to help you go and find an internship or help you with degrees or help you contact with businesses and stuff. So, yeah, we were, in, in, that, in that sense, pretty spoiled. Like, it... it it really shows, like you look at the, the amount of stuff that has come out of that from a off-field perspective. Um, there's some brilliant companies and, and sort of people with a genuine appetite to, to go and do stuff off-field. Um, and it's kept them in the clubs longer than, you know, than they were probably could have been there for. How was it in the first few weeks when you retired? Can you remember? I finished up in Japan, but then I, then I got the um, opportunity to play for Barbars against England but yeah I like really straight in I mean straight into business to be honest and and that I, I kind of wanted it that way you, you want to just keep keep things moving so um yeah I, I was planned pretty much straight in back in the office I think very fortunate to have something that, like I'm I've really got my, my teeth stuck into um I think it, it does make a big difference I feel like we had a call yeah because I'll check my dates when I did finish because I thought we had a call when we were both still playing mm. We were talking about whether we were going to knock it on the head. Yeah. And I remember your language was, I love rugby, but I'm loving my business and I'm loving what we're doing with that. And 100%. I'm thinking about knocking it on the head. And I was like, yeah, I feel the same, to be honest. So I finished on Friday in May and the Monday, following Monday, was back to the office and just straight at it. And I've preferred it that way, I personally. I, I don't know what there really is to, to wait for. When I finished playing... I did the typical, well, just to take the opportunities because they're there. So I said yes a lot to different stuff, which was great. Finally got to actually earn some money from rugby, which was great. Um, and also find things I like to do, built a really good network. But actually over the last year, towards the end of last year, I was really struggling mentally, mainly because I just was doing too much and I wasn't giving, I wasn't filling up the cup at all. 
it was all take from me and and so I was just exhausted and didn't have purpose didn't feel like I was getting some anywhere with anything um so made a bit of a choice to step away from quite a lot of not a lot of work but just what I was saying yes to and what I was doing and I'm actually reducing what I'm doing and being a lot more strategic and clear so that I can give a hundred percent of myself and then therefore whoever I'm working with is getting the best part of me but also I'm enjoying everything so obviously appreciate you might not miss it all the time but what does it feel like when well there's moments like the world cup is coming up six nations etc and you're not part of that is there a bit of FOMO do you feel like you would want to be part of that yeah last year was the first women's world cup that I that was played and I worked on this one um in studio and I still remember the emotion of um the girls losing at the final and having to sit there and watch. And it was the most bizarre feeling. I finished, we came off air and I felt numb because it was just so strange. But yeah, that it's like those different types of moments that's a different emotion, um, which is quite hard, but also a nice check-in um, because I sat down with my dad and we and I said, you know, he said, "Are you all right?" I was like, you know, this is getting a bit real. You know, you know that you're not playing anymore. And he was like, "But you should be really proud of where you are. Like, look at what you're doing, and look at what you did." And I think that that check in from someone that is massive confident for me um, was a pulled me back to the present and didn't let me live back to where I used to be. I think um, there are there's clearly elements of it you're you're going to miss. Like, Don't miss all those trophies. I mean, does it, does it get a bit, <laughs> bit of a burden, all of those trophies? No, like, I watched that Sari's, um, <laughs> Sari's sale game and like, brilliant. And, you know, what, did I happen to be in the same pub as them the next day? Yes, I was <laughs> like, I, I think there is a lot of negativity around like, you know, when you retire, you're going to miss this, do this, or, you know, you'll have these issues, you'll do that. Like, there are also a large portion of people who really enjoy it, who really um, experience you know, the shackles are off a little bit in terms of you can plan stuff for, you know, you don't have 40, 40 weekends of a year, like, maxed out. I think, like, if you've got an appreciation for actually how much you did enjoy it, and then also, like, all the, the newness of, of the things to come, maybe the mindset of, like, you know, that shouldn't be a daunting thing. It, it should be a fun, exciting thing to look forward to. Um, and that's why I had, I, I had to pull myself early because... I was too excited. I was generally too excited and too sort of. I wanted to get stuck in a little bit, a little bit earlier than you know, waiting a couple more years. It's, there's nothing to be afraid of if you're, if you've had some experiences or you've put yourself out there or you feel like you know roughly where you want to go. The fear for me would come from not being prepared, as opposed to, am I going to be good at this or good at that? As long as you go into it with this isn't the same as learning what the coach wants you to do in a session and you just have to learn some new skills or whatever. It's learning like how to turn up to a job nine to five and what is socially acceptable in a changing room is very different to what's socially acceptable in the workplace. Some of those things that you just need to learn and as long as there's a bit of humility about it um, when you turn up, the workplace is fine. It's really important why you need to get work experience early, why because actually you are massively behind when you finish at 30, 35, if you're lucky to get up to that, you know, into that time frame as a rugby player. That said, it's not to panic people, I don't think, but more so to set you on the task that to get you to not have to go down to intern level as a mid thirties around 19, 20 year olds, because socially and then psychologically that drop from being this level to this level is really hard. I do think being prepared to start somewhere near the bottom if you go into the place of work shouldn't be seen as a bad thing. You should, like, you should be willing to go and put your face to the grinding stone and, and get things moving because unless you've done the work before, you're going to have to learn. And I do think that showing that you're prepared to put the graft in is what most companies will be looking for more than they will be your technical skills on an Excel or a PowerPoint or whatever. Are you prepared to get stuck in and 
and get learning it. I think rugby is there at the moment. Enjoy it. Get what you can from it. But at the same time, look what's next. It's not, it's not just about the kind of the plan A route.